Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Black Swan Capitalist YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to talk about the fair market value of XRP. So let's dive into the captivating story behind the proposal that shook the XRP ecosystem. At the center of it all is Jimmy Valley, the visionary mind driving Val Hill Capital's pursuit of a brighter future for the XRP community. So in December of 2020, when the SEC filed a lawsuit against Ripple, the consequences were quite severe. If you guys remember, the market witnessed a massive sell-off of XRP, causing its value to plummet. Jimmy Valley, not one to shy away from the challenges ahead, recognized the need for action, and he envisioned a solution that would not only address the immediate aftermath, but also shed light on the critical issue of regulatory capture and its far-reaching implications. As 2021 approached, Jimmy and his dedicated team at Val Hill Capital stepped forward with a courageous proposal. They actually reached out to the US Central Bank, none other than the Federal Reserve itself, with an offer that would turn heads. The proposal was about selling their XRP holdings, as well as the XRP of others who wished to participate at a significantly higher price than what the exchanges were offering. It was a very daring move, but it was designed to draw attention to the appearance of regulatory capture and ignite a much needed discussion. Back in 2018, then SEC Corporation Finance Director Bill Hinman uh, stated that he believed Ether was not a security. Uh, last month, CFTC Chair uh, Benham expressed his view that Ether is a commodity. Uh, the state attorney general of New York asserted in a court filing last month that Ether is a security. Clearly, an asset cannot be both a commodity and a security. Do you agree? Look, I think that the general sweep of what Congress did, not just in the 30s, but as amended- I'm asking you, sitting in your chair now to make an assessment under the laws as exist, is Ether a commodity or a security? Without speaking to any one. I know you've okay, repeatedly said that you're not going to speak to one, except you've spoken to one, Bitcoin. So I'm asking you to speak to a second one, the lar second largest market cap here. And speaking to the tokens, there's 10 to 12,000. If there's a group of entrepreneurs in I'm the asking middle, about the one. public is anticipating a profit based on the- I'm asking a specific question, Chair Gensler. I said this in private. This should be no shock to you. I'm asking this question. Is it an e is Ether a commodity or a security? And again, it depends on the facts and the law. And if there's a group of individuals- I'm asking about the, the facts middle. and the law sitting in your seat and the judgment you are making. And so, uh, Mr. Chair, I think you, you would not want me to prejudge because I'm also- But you have prejudged on this. You've taken, you've taken 50 enforcement actions. We're finding out as we go, as you file suit, as people get Wells notices on what is a security in your view, in your agency's view. I'm asking you a very simple question about the second largest digital asset. What is your view? And my view is, is if there's a group of individuals in the middle, middle that the public is- All right. This groundbreaking proposal basically set the stage for a number of questions. How did the SEC's lawsuit impact retail holders? What were the financial damages inflicted? More importantly, what was the real purpose of the lawsuit to hinder the full adoption of the XRP ledger and its ability to fulfill the intended use case? And if the potential use case was fully realized at the time, what do you think the value of XRP would have been? These are very important questions. Now, in response to Jimmy Valley's call, Val Hill Capital decided to invite a larger group of individuals to join forces, including myself and my brother. This collective is known as the Confidential Committee. We decided to go on a journey of analysis, discussion, and discovery. And we have to give a lot of credit to Molly, Patrick, and Jimmy Valley. Chair Gensler, FTX was domiciled abroad and so is Binance, yet American consumers still had access to both. You can't really think that pushing this industry abroad is going to protect American consumers when it hasn't several times in the past on your watch. You say the crypto market is rife with non-compliance. However, existing SEC rules make no sense for blockchain-based companies and following them would actually kill these businesses. Your regulatory style lacks flexibility and nuance, and as a result, 
you've been an incompetent cop on the beat, doing nothing to protect everyday Americans and pushing American firms into the hands of the CCP. Your intention to work against SEC mission and put American investors in harm's way has been made very apparent, sir. It's been a year and a half since you've appeared before this committee. You need to answer to Congress about the issues that you've had with the SEC staff union, the work environment you've cultivated at the SEC that's led to hemorrhaging of senior staff, the intellectual inconsistency of your regulatory treatment towards Bitcoin spot ETFs, and your politicization of capital formation opportunities for your expired. treatment of certain SPACs. And that's just to name a few. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I highly encourage you to read this document and look it over thoroughly. That way you can take your time to understand what's being done over there. But I'm going to simplify it for you. This paper is basically designed to determine the fair market value of XRP. After a detailed approach and months of careful research and thorough review, the committee created six different models to simulate different scenarios how this can unfold. And the conclusion was clear. And I think we can all agree on that. If the lawsuit hadn't happened, XRP's value would have skyrocketed well beyond the current state it's in right now. There were some members of the staff who had been up to their elbows in this for some time, but it wasn't generally well understood across the agency what was going on in the digital asset space. Um, but very quickly, we uh, got a team together and focused, uh, and today that team is headed by Val Sapanik, who is a, a senior advisor to me for all of the uh, fintech work that we are doing. Uh, and she has uh, over five years experience, excuse me, in this particular area and over 20 years experience at the SEC, very seasoned, very well known in the um, digital asset community and I think highly regarded and um, a terrific person to help us focus uh, our efforts across all the divisions. I'm, I'm the director of the, corporation, uh, the Division of Corporation Finance. Uh, the Division of Corporation Finance generally regulates offerings of securities and exempt uh, security offerings. Uh, we sort of administer that space. Um, as such, we have a pretty heavy responsibility to sort of determine is something a security offering. Now, after very careful due diligence, uh, I gotta say, the significance of this paper it cannot be overstated. It stands as a testament to the dedication and expertise of this diverse team of professionals who've volunteered their time and their skills for this collective effort to propel this analysis. It is crucial to acknowledge that the XRP Ledger ecosystem has lost valuable years to this ridiculous and unconstitutional lawsuit. We all know this is a sham, so I'm not even going to get into that. But unfortunately, the three years that we lost innovation, money, and time, that cannot be reclaimed. So I really think that this is a very important document. Immerse yourself with these documents here absorb the insights and challenge yourself to understand it better because together we can forge this path towards knowledge, innovation, and a future where the price and the potential of XRP is truly realized. To end this video, I just want to give a big shout out to uh, Patrick, Molly Elmore, Jimmy Valley. There's a lot of people putting a lot of time and effort into this and you know we're all truly grateful.